Hey guys, welcome back to the Kool Aid Podcast. Welcome back to another video. On today's video, guys, we're gonna be talking about Barcelona's opponents in the Champions League. The Champions League draw has just happened just a couple of hours ago. And so we're gonna be talking about Barcelona's opponents. Who are they gonna be facing? How do we fancy our chances? And then as well, I'm gonna be talking about Barcelona's transfer situation. What is the latest in regards to that? Are we gonna be able to make any signings? Are Barcelona done in the transfer market? And then lastly, talking about Frank and Young, even the latest in regards to his injury. And um, we have some bad news. We have some bad news. Uh, but guys, before I get started on the video, make sure you're following me on all my social media platforms. Everything's posted down below in the description. Go over there and check me out. That way you guys to stay up to date with everything that I do on the channel. But guys, let's get straight into the video. All right, guys, let's get straight into the video and let's talk about Barcelona's opponents uh, in the Champions League. Now, you guys know that the that no, for this Champions League season, the format is different. It's no longer going to be uh, a, a basically a groups and four teams in each group. It's going to be a basically a league format, which is like one huge team and uh, each team is going to play uh seven different teams no eight different teams uh four teams at home and four teams away and uh, looking at this draw right now guys barcelona they're going to be play, going to be playing Bayern munich at home atalanta young boys and brest and the teams that they are going to be playing away from home it's going to be borussia dortmund benfica red star belgrade and monaco those are the teams that barcelona are going to be facing in uh, this newly formatted champions league format and um looking at the draw that barcelona they have gotten i i think it's actually a very favorable draw other than for example Bayern munich i think all of the draws uh, all of the teams uh barcelona they actually can't beat and so that's very very good for example when you look at for example psg's uh you know drawing which they're going to be facing you know atletico madrid arsenal and uh, i i believe a couple more teams as well i think at athletic you know it's a very very uh tough draw for psg and barcelona I, they have gotten a favorable draw uh, most of these teams barcelona they can't beat um and other than for example bayern munich in which seems to be our kryptonite um i actually fancy barcelona's chances we are going to be going away from home uh, to play against Borussia Dortmund. That's going to be an interesting game. Robert Lewandowski going back to his um, to, to one of his former clubs uh, and both for former clubs in regards to Bayern Munich and Borussia Dortmund. We're going to be going away uh, to play at Benfica, away and to play Red Star Belgrade, and then going to uh, <laughs> going to France, uh, going to go play against Monaco. Very very interesting, guys. And, um, you know, you also have the typical uh, Thomas Muller video slash um, basically excitement um, in which he talks about and he greets his uh, Champions League opponents. He says, I am very excited to meet my old friend Hansi Flick with FC Barcelona, uh, a player who you know has caused Barcelona some issues in the past. Um, and, you know, looking at Barcelona's all-time uh, matchup in the UCL league phase against Bayern Munich. Bayern Munich, they've won 10 times. They've drawn once. And Barcelona, they've only beaten Bayern Munich twice. And so can Barcelona under Hansi Flick achieve, you know, something different? But, you know, looking at the overall group stage, guys, I think one of the most worrying things is just Barcelona's injury crisis. Because I am very optimistic about Barcelona's chances if everyone is fit. Under Hansi Flick, I think Barcelona can actually, you know, make a deep run in the Champions League. But it's all dependent on our injury situation. Are our players actually available and fit to play? Because our squad depth is absolutely pitiful. Because when we talk about the transfer market, you know, and we talk about the, the the work that this board has done, it's been very, very poor. And you could say that it's arguably Barcelona's worst transfer uh, transfer window because it's left the squad weakened. And I, I, I want to be talking about that right now, guys. But uh, before I do, let me know your guys' thoughts on Barcelona's UCL draw. Are you guys happy with the draw? Which teams do you guys see as tricky? Which teams um, are you excited to face? For example, I know that that clash against uh, Bayern Munich is going to be exciting as well. Going away 
um, to uh, Portugal to play against Benfica. That's going to be something interesting. And, um, you know, hopefully Barcelona, they do get the job done and we are able to finish in the top eight and advance just straight into the knockouts without having to play the playoffs. Uh, but now, guys, I do want to be talking about Barcelona's transfer situation because tons of media outlets, Sport, Ravelo, Rack One, uh, they've all said that Barcelona, they have accepted that they will end the transfer window without complying to the one-to-run -one, uh, FFP rule. And um, this closes the transfer market. Barcelona, they will not be able to sign anyone. And unless someone leaves or Barcelona, you know, figures out a you know a market deal for example let's say the nike deal uh gets signed or anything like that barcelona they will not be able to sign anyone and uh, that's just it's it's a very very bad look because uh laporta deco all of these guys have been very optimistic in the start of the summer and saying hey barcelona they're very close to reaching the one-to-one -one deal uh we're signing these deals um they basically were very optimistic and you know they've basically sold lies they, they've lied to us saying that barcelona they're close to returning uh to normalcy and it's just simply not the case barcelona right now uh looking at this graphic guys look at all the players that have had to leave in order for uh danny Olmo to be registered that's absolutely insane and uh, when you look at the transfer market in general when you're, when you're looking at barcelona's sporting department i honestly think that the squad is weaker than it was at the start you know, Gundogan's left, or Romeo, Marcos Alonso, Roque, Cancelo, Felix, Roberto, Mikel Fey, Mark Gui, uh, Juni Narajo, Des, Lenglet, Valle. Those are all of the departures that have happened. And only Pau Victor and Danny Olmo have been the reinforcements. And when you look at just like the quantity, I think Barcelona, they've just weakened themselves in terms of depth. Um, I know Marc Cancelo, Marc Bernal, uh, Gerard Martin, they have been integrated into the squad. But they weren't additions. They were already at Barcelona. And that's why I say this transfer market has been absolutely abysmal. And, you know, I would say the squad is actually worse than it was at the start. Because other than Danny Olmo, you know, Barcelona, they have regrets. We've let so many goals of so many players. And even though, for example, some of these players were just not good enough to be starters, they were good enough uh, to just play some trash minutes, let's say in the Copa del Rey, in, in one of the opening matches in the Copa del Rey, you know, where we play against third division teams, or for example, in you know a league game, or playing against uh, a team fighting relegation, anything like that. You know, we need depth, and just that's just simply not the case. You know, we have no options in the midfield. You only have Pedri, and you only have Marc Casado. Uh, in center backs, you only have Inigo Martinez and you have Paco Arce. We're one injury away from having an absolute meltdown and collapsing. And so, you know, this is just terrible, terrible work. Uh, by Laporta and Deco just putting Barcelona in such a terrible situation. And I feel bad for Hansi Flick because Hansi Flick, in what limited um, you know resources he's had, he's managed to put in some fantastic performances. And honestly, looking at the start that Hansi Flick has had, imagine if he's had all these players at his disposal. Imagine if he had a Gavi, you know, a fit from the start, a Frankie Dion, and a Rajo. Oh, it's so many players available now. I think in Barcelona, they'd be very optimistic of what could happen in the season. Uh, but I just know, guys, that injuries are going to happen. Suspensions, they are going to happen. You know, you cannot expect these players to be fit for the entirety of the season. And it's very worrying. It's very worrying. And so when you're talking about the Champions League, yes, Barcelona, they can honestly go toe-to-toe -to -toe with anyone. But it's dependent on our injury situation or our players actually fit in order to to basically compete and um, and do well in the competition. But that's something that we're gonna have to see. And Barcelona, um, their their transfer window basically being closed. Uh, let me know your guys' thoughts in regards to that. Barcelona not signing anyone else. Are you guys happy with Barcelona just signing? Paul Victor and Daniel Omo and letting go of so many players. Let me know your guys' thoughts down below. And uh, now talking about some more negative news, guys. I want to be talking about Frankie de Jong because apparently from Black One and from other um, Spanish media outlets, Frankie, if Frankie de Jong does not have surgery, he will never come back to 100%. Barcelona, they are worried that, hey, if Frankie de Jong he does recover, he's just one blow, uh, one um, you know contact or one just unfortunate accident uh from relapsing and being you know injured all over again and it's very worrying signs guys because frankie de Jong, he got injured months ago months ago you know he he got injured in the el Clasico against real madrid and uh, since then he's been out he's missed the euros he had the entire summer to recover and he's still not even back and if this report is to believe if that 
Frankie De Jong, if he does return, he still won't be able to return to 100% because of that chronic condition that he has in his ankle and he needs surgery, then that means he's going to be out for even longer. And, and, you know, he could be out for, let's say, you know, potentially the start of next year. And that does no good for Hansi Flick. That does no good for Barcelona. And that's being reported right now that Frankie De Jong has always refused uh, surgery for the treatment of his injury. And he, you know, he will try to return after the international break. Right now, people are saying that he's going to be returning for that game against Girona. But uh, we're going to have to see how Frankie Young comes back and if he relapses. And if he relapses, guys, and he's out for, let's say, more months, then this is just something that I just I cannot believe, man. And just this, how, if you're Hansi Flick, how can you work under these, in, in these situations, man, where your key players, they're injured, you have no reinforcements, you have limited options, you're going to try to do your best as you possibly can. And I just know that Barcelona fans are going to go and bash Hansi Flick saying, oh my God, we lost against, let's say, who, 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 who's, who's the worst opponent that Barcelona can face in, in, the, in the Champions League? Uh, what, Young Boys, Brest, Red Star, Belgrade? You could say, okay, Barcelona, they've lost against Young Boys. Barcelona, I guarantee the fans are going to go in an absolute outrage. But simply, Barcelona just don't have the options for that. They just don't have the players. They don't have the means um, to sustain a 40, 50 plus game season. It's just unbelievable. But, um, you know, I'm back on Frank and Young, guys. You know, I want Frankie Jones to succeed at Barcelona. He's a player that I think if he's at his absolute best and in a very, very good system, he could do very well. But um, knowing Frankie Jones injury record, knowing how the, the condition that he has in his ankle, and sometimes, you know, looking at his lack of performances in the big games, knowing, has, looking and knowing his de defensive liabilities, it does raise some doubts. It does raise some doubts. And, um, you know, we talked about Frankie Young's contract situation as well, knowing that Barcelona can't sell him. It's just an absolute mess. But, um, guys, that was it for the Barcelona news of the day. Definitely let me know your guys' thoughts down below in the comments. We know our opponents in the Champions League. Barcelona, they are going to be facing top dog Bayern Munich as well as Borussia Dortmund. Barcelona's transfer market has ended. Uh, Barcelona, they will not be able to sign anyone unless uh, someone leaves or... Barcelona managed to sign and uh, uh, basically a good deal, a good marketing deal in which revenue is able to come in. And uh, lastly, Frankie De Jong needing potentially uh, to undergo surgery. Let me know your guys' thoughts down below in the comments. And as always, make sure to like, subscribe, and comment. And uh, I'll catch you guys all in the next video. Peace out, guys. <laughs>